they're saying all the stuff that the BBC won't say and they're going to give a voice to the voiceless. The first person was Preeti Patel. Shall we under the duvet? Shall we talk about... Did you know my kryptonite is awkward, man? Why is that? Is it guilt? Should we talk about some other horrible, horrible government bureaucrats who are fucking the country oh, over? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Ask yourself, what is the point of saying that? Not in this economy. Try harder, be better. I haven't yet watched Fight Club. Firstly, because we have to bring it up, we have to talk about it. Lockdown in England has been delayed (laughs) again. Oh, sorry. Reopening in England has been delayed. Lockdown is very much still in place. So um, for those of you who don't know, we were meant to come out of lockdown, like completely out of lockdown next Monday. That's now no longer happening. And it's probably been delayed for another four weeks because I saw hashtag another four trending on Twitter this morning. (laughs) It is. It is another four weeks. Furlough, however, is gone. Mm, Yes, I saw that. I saw that. So, But like Freedom Day, which is what it has been... Um, termed the 21st of June. It isn't actually Freedom isn't Day. What, yeah. Isn't that it, also what they called the day that Brexit won? Freedom Day. <laughs> Everything is Freedom well, Day. Well, <laughs> um, f- fucking, if anyone who thinks the staffing crisis in hospitality isn't a direct fucking result of Brexit can suck my fucking dick. Like, it's oh, absolutely yes, a consequence of, of Brexit. Every single pub, if you walk past any single pub in this country, they've all got hiring. Um, things in the window because there's yeah, all yeah, of our yeah, hospitality yeah. people have been fucking deported um anyway um because everyone who wanted to work those kind of hours came from europe yeah that's it yeah yeah um yeah. so the um what was i gonna say oh um, yeah so freedom day isn't actually an end to all restrictions or like masks in public it just means those things aren't law anymore like that's mm-hmm. what it actually is like it's it's not um the two meter rule isn't going on like yeah, 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 yeah. nightclubs aren't coming back. Capacities yeah. aren't going to be what they used to be. Like, you know, so it, everyone, you know, can chill out a little bit because it, was, it wasn't it was actually that much of a huge yeah, yeah, change. Yeah. Um, it just meant that like, the, I mean, I suppose it is a huge change because it's like the legal ramifications of it. Like it's no longer illegal to be within, you know, two meters of someone, but um, it's, it's not uh, life as we knew it. It's not. No. It's not a return to life as we knew it. That's no. for fucking sure. And like, I don't know. And this probably isn't the right place for me to be wondering aloud about this. But so, for example, like we're meant to be going to the pub for a friend's birthday the last weekend of this month. And it's booked for like 10 people. Does that now not get to happen? Because it's still the rule of six outdoors in pubs. Nah. Oh, nah. that's fine. I'm going to a, an outdoor party on um, Saturday at Pub on the Park. Um 20 people. Oh, okay. So as, that's as, fine. as long as it's outside, it's fine. Oh, in that case, I whatever. In that case, then that's fine. Right. Like, <laughs> anyway, I just, I just worried that I was just like, oh, I will be right here on Saturday. But if you're listening to this, I've already been, then this happened. So, <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Good. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Speaking of um, people overreacting, shall we talk about? Is it great British news? Oh my God, this is in my notes. This is in my notes. This is in my notes. Let's talk about it. It's GB news. It's GB news. GB news. We're finally getting our own fucking version of Fox News. It's finally happened. A 24 hour news channel. Um, And their first ever recorded interview that was aired was with... Da, 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 Pretty Patel on her border policy and our hostile environment. Um, so yeah, it's a 24 hour news channel. I was reading up about it this morning. So it's essentially like familiar faces from basically every news network that already exists. So you've got Sky News people, you've got BBC, you've got ITV, blah, blah, blah. And they've all defected to this news yes. channel. Which, yes. apart from Al Jazeera English, is the only news channel, news network to have launched in the past, like, 50 years or some shit. Like, it's it's quite um, unprecedented. Um, and I was reading about it this morning, and their mission statement is to tackle cancel culture as the assault on free speech that it is. Um, it won't be yet another echo chamber for the metropolitan mindset. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and they've also made it extremely clear that they are proud to be British. Mm-hmm. Which I know I didn't get that like, vibe. I didn't mm, get that vibe at mm, all. Where was mm. that? Was it in the subtext of all of the fucking flag waving and how everything is named Great British? So their breakfast, their morning show is called the Great British Breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I it makes me sad that when someone says they're proud to be British, I immediately assume they are a racist. But like <laughs> that, it's kind of <laughs> what it makes me think. Like, I know it shouldn't, but, I like, mean, and, and I know it's a shame that, like, it's a shame. in this country is, like, aligned with um, prejudice. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, it's awkward, because this is the thing. I think this has happened everywhere, pretty much, though, is that I, you know, I, I believe in believe in it's a weird term I believe in patriotism like great but it's become meshed together in almost every country with nationalism yeah and that's what we're not okay with right uh like when we discovered we the collective we when the scientists discovered AstraZeneca uh, the Cambridge AstraZeneca vaccine and then the Oxford one I was proud of that I was like that feels really patriotic that we have done it we've done this we were the first to like legalize the vaccine or approve it or whatever and I was like great it's when it crosses the line into nationalism that it's like oh and you're right I hate that when I see um a St George's flag I feel like I shouldn't be in that neighborhood unless it's the world cup and then I maybe euros I don't know should I be worried will be will people be putting up the St George's we're a bit we're a bit less flaggy for the Euros than we are for okay. the World Cup. Like okay. you're not going to have people like with flags on their cars and ship the Euros. I don't think. Okay, so that's fine. Then. So still keep on. Oh my yeah. So if you see one, cross the road. Yeah. Cross the road. Yeah. So stay, <laughs> stay vigilant. Stay flag vigilant on my end. Then got it. Um, but yeah, this show, man, it's just like Andrew Neil. For those of you who don't know, he is just like. He was on the BBC for like fucking since he was born or something. He was just like born onto the fucking BBC <laughs> stage and he stayed there until he was an old man, an old angry man. And Andrew Neil is very like, he got away with a lot of stuff at the BBC, stuff that he said that I found frankly like outrageous. He's 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 right wing. And now he is like kind of the star of the show of GB News. Yeah, it's very much his brainchild. Oh, very much so. And, you know, he's gone over there because it's like they're saying all the stuff that the BBC won't say and they're going to give a voice to the voiceless. The first person was Preeti Patel. I would argue that our, um, you know, uh, home office. Why do I never be able to? Why can I never say her job title? Home secretary isn't voiceless. Uh, Then (laughs) they had Nigel Farage on there, a man who constantly gets fucking media attention. And I'm just, and and, uh, what was his name? Alan Sugar. I'm like, "Mm, multi-millionaire Alan Sugar, the voiceless. The the quietest, the the quietest (laughs) man in In British media. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, it's just embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. It is embarrassing. And I shit you not. Hopefully it will push other news networks to do better i hope so and i shit you not they said that boris johnson was too woke when nigel farage was on there what because he doesn't lynch black people like what is Mm. the like how i was listening to um obviously huge frankie boyle fan um and he has just released he's doing a podcast series called the promethead have you heard about this no so it's him reading old essays that he's written for like The Guardian or whatever over mm-hmm. the years. And oh, he's, cool. he's got obviously Glaswegian accent. And I think Frankie Boyle has this uh, reputation for being quite like abrasive and harsh, mm. but like his reading voice is so soft and like, and the delivery is lovely. Uh, anyway, so he was reading one of his articles that was uh, from 2018 or something. And he described Boris Johnson before he was prime minister um as looking like something you would keep your pajamas in (laughs) i mean that's the kind of irreverent comedy that i expect coming from frankie boyle i'd really recommend the prometheum it's lovely i'm gonna check it out i've got so much time for frankie boyle i have no interest in football and i watched that entire series that he did on the bbc about frankie boyle goes to russia to talk about football or whatever it was called and fascinating fascinating stuff absolutely loved it 